Yes, sir. So there's a story in Mark chapter 2 uh, where there's a Jesus is speaking and, and there's uh, uh, someone that's paralyzed. Jesus says, uh, verse chapter 2, verse 5 says, And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes were sitting there questioning in their hearts, why does, the man, why does this man speak like that? He is blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Uh, and immediately Jesus, perceiving in his spirit that they thus questioned within themselves, said to them, why do you question these things in your heart? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, rise, take up your bed, and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I say to you, rise, pick up your bed, and go home. Uh, and he didn't, so. Yeah. Okay. Now, for uh, for Jesus to say the sins has been forgiven, and then they want to accuse him of blasphemy and want uh. to kill him. Now, so the point is that how can Jesus forgive someone's sin if he's not God? Is it? That, yeah, that's that, what that Jesus accused him of. Yeah. Okay. Then let me put into perspective that Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him in one of the gatherings, he asked, "Who amongst you would like to go to paradise?" So everybody's remained silent. Then out of nowhere, at the back, someone raised his hand. Me, you're a, you're a messenger of God. Then the prophet said, you go to paradise. Now, as a prophet, how can he say someone go to paradise? Because the one who admits someone to paradise is God. So that doesn't make Prophet Muhammad as God. So the Jews are wrong. Sorry? So the, the scribes in the text are wrong. Is that what you're saying? What we believe is that the scribe is wrong. wrong accusation. The, 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 the scribe is wrong. Why we, why we believe so? Because for us, yes, a prophet has a certain limited authority to speak. That's why they are the prophet, to speak on behalf of God. That's why they are the prophet. They, they, that's why they are, you see, that's why I, I, I like to make this comparison. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. To forgive someone's sin, and to admit someone into paradise, which is a bigger act? I consider them the same. In, in Christianity, they're the same. Yeah, and you can't enter paradise without your sin. Okay, true, true, true. So meaning, if we were to use the same equation, for example, that forgive sin can be God, then can we claim that Prophet Muhammad can be God too? Just because he can admit someone into paradise. We can't say so. And not only that particular Ukasha, the companion of the Prophet, there is a list of companions where he named one by one who will be entering paradise. And as well, the Prophet at night, he dreamed about one of the companions, a black slave, where he dreamed of him, and then he asked, the next day he asked, Oh Bilal, what have you done? So Bilal was like, what do you mean, you have just yes, messenger of God? Yesterday, I dreamed that your footstep is in paradise. What have you done? So Bilal said, O oh, messenger of God, I do not sleep at night except that I have forgiven all those people have who, who already hurt me. So prophet said, this is one of the ways that caused you to go to paradise. So you're, you're claiming that in that passage, Jesus is forgiving sins because he can see that the person's sins are forgiven. Uh, not, not, not see, but we believe that... As the prophet. Yes, as a prophet, he's giving the authority to forgive someone. So sin. then the Jewish leaders say that you're blaspheming. And Jesus says, he doesn't contradict that. He doesn't contradict that he tells them that you may know that the Son of God has voted up to forgive sins, and he causes them to walk. So he doesn't say, no, I'm not God. No, they just accuse him of being God. He says he confirms what he's claiming by performing a miracle. So it seems from the text that Jesus himself says, slow down. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. It seems from the text that Jesus is, he doesn't contradict their accusation of blasphemy. Okay, that's what you say, that you know, we always use the clear text okay, to interpret the unclear text. Right? The clear text and the unclear text. It's for us to uh, ponder and comprehend as well. What is the clear text? What is the clear text and what is the unclear text? Now, the clear text, according to us, what we understand, of course, we stand to be corrected as well, right? Because we want to have uh, intellectual discussions. So the clear text is John 17, 3, Jesus said, this life is eternal, so they may know you, the one true God, and Jesus that thou hast sent. Okay, so there is a clear word. Of course, you can have many unclear words to talk about. Like for example, I give an example in, in, in Islam. I, I, I mean, it's not fair on me, only for me just to talk about the Bible, right? I should talk about the Quran as well. The Quran, Kul Hu Allah Hu Ahad, say God is one. But on another hand, God says, we, Nahnu. In Arabic, it's Nahnu. Now, God is one, but yet on the other hand, God seems like saying that He is many when He used the word we. 
So how do we interpret? Now, God is one, is clear. We is not clear. Because when we talk about we, it can be in the form of numbers, the plurals of numbers, or the plurals of royalty. Right? So when we use we, so we interpret it using the clear verses, which is one. Can anybody here misunderstood one? Nobody can misunderstand that. One is one. You know, how many wives do you have? Ruben? How many? Wives. How wives? Wives. Oh, yes. wives. Yeah. <laughs> how many wives do you have? <laughs> she is correct. Yeah. No, everybody can understand one. But then when we say we, now, what is we? We are using these clear verses to interpret this one. <laughs>